Life has returned to these former front lines. Five years after the war with the Islamic State group, residents of Mosul have been reclaiming their city. The Al Nuri Mosque, where Islamic State leader Abu Bakr al Baghdadi proclaimed a caliphate, was destroyed in 2017. It's now being rebuilt under the guidance of UNESCO. Now we are uh, trying to sustain the doom. After that, we will install again the marble, build the walls, and remove the steel frame to, to put the, the doom on the, on the new walls and, the, and over also the, the original pillars. Local residents keen to pick up the threads of life before 2014 have asked for the original materials to be reused. Besides changing its identity, the Islamic State group destroyed it as a religious, archaeological and cultural site, which was the symbol of the city. The mosque will return to what it used to be. Excavations at the site have revealed something else, the original foundations of the mosque dating back to the 12th century. All the decorations, pillars and fragments of the crowns that were missing, which used to be considered the most valuable missing pieces, were found during the excavations. These rescued artefacts will be displayed in this area, open to visitors. Beneath the scaffolding is what remains of the leaning minaret of al Hadba, a symbol of Mosul for nine centuries. For Omar Taka, who fought the Islamic State group in 2017, it's the most important piece to rebuild. What we are doing here is to build a sample of the, of the shaft of the minaret to know how to connect the, the external core with the stairs, with the internal core to be tilled. We are very proud to be part of this uh, team that we will uh, rehabilitate the minaret. Around $110 million have been raised by UNESCO and more than 3,000 workers have been trained to restore the historic buildings. The jobs are often temporary, but here a third of the population is unemployed and many have seized the opportunity. Sufyan says he's learned a new trade. We started to work on the Farouche stone especially. Then we formed a whole team. Being from the Nineveh governorate, Farouche stone and archaeology are obviously dear to us. This archaeological heritage can be explored at the Heritage House. A couple of Mosul architects have recreated it virtually, hoping that the destroyed sites will not be forgotten. Many of the children of the new generation have never seen these historic buildings in the city. So when they come here, they can visit them and learn about ancient civilization. On top of that, this technology allows us to document these historic buildings and preserve them virtually on the internet. Mohammed fled Mosul eight years ago. It's the first time since then that he's seen the Nabi Yunis shrine now in ruins. It's a good experience. You can see Mosul's heritage. But I wish I could walk there, smell the air, see the people. Erasing the region's dark past will take time. Artists, too, are hoping to make their contribution. This sculpture titled My Lovely Lady was erected in 2018 on a roundabout where the Islamic State group held public executions. Its sculptor now aims to revive the Assyrian heritage of the city with the statue of King Sennacherib, who reigned here 700 years ago. I decided that we should focus on this civilization and their artwork so we can educate the society and the people in Mosul because unfortunately, only a very small portion of its heritage is open to visitors. Defending Mosul's heritage is a family affair. Omar's brother Yunus is behind the Nineveh operetta, named after the Nineveh Mosul region. The musical project carries a message of unity. We have uh, Kurdish uh, Shabak and uh, Christians, uh, Yazidis, uh, Turkmen, this governorate uh, hold all these sects. This would be an unthinkable act under the Islamic State group who forbid all non-religious music. Asil started singing after Mosul was recaptured. I want to send a message that we have talent in Mosul, including women's voices and talented young people.
Reconstruction has not started everywhere. The neighborhood of Al Maidan still bears the scars of ferocious battle. Its residents, who were evacuated at the time, are growing impatient. I've lived on the other side of the river for six years. I have to pay 300,000 dinars for rent. They haven't done anything for us. The municipality says plans have been drawn up. The neighborhood is due to be rebuilt exactly as it was, to an estimated cost of 40 million euros.